Hey, Mel here with the Screencasting Wizard, helping you digitize your knowledge to get it online and web ready. Hey, I just want to give you a little bit of context for the video you're about to see. It's basically a video that is an excerpt from an online course library I'm going to be releasing soon, probably about February in 2013. And in that course library, basically, there will be additional downloads, templates, checklists, and so on, all about teaching you how to do the same kinds of things that I do about digitizing your knowledge and getting it online and web ready and possibly even monetizing it in 2013. Now, all the video modules aren't ready to go just yet, but when they are, I will be letting all of my subscribers know, and there will be some special discount pricing that goes along with that as well. So if you want to make sure you get in on that, make sure you hit the link below to subscribe to my notification list, and I'll let you know when it's ready to go. All right, that's it for now. Uh, in the meantime, I hope you learn at least one new thing in the following video. And after you learn, remember, execute. Take care. Hey, it's Mel. In this video, I want to share with you some of the things that I do that makes it a little bit easier to prepare for your screencasting project or your video recording project and so on. Uh, these are actually some pretty simple things that a lot of folks actually don't follow, but uh, they can actually save you a lot of work downstream and also uh, give you a little bit more of a professional presentation. So these include things like you know, just preparing your desktop, on your, uh, you know, your background on your desktop, getting things cleaned up. As you can see here, I've got a couple of windows. Uh, open, so you want to make sure we clean some of those things up. Other things like maybe considering a professional background, not just a background on your desktop, but also, well, you know, the background behind me. Uh, so you know, be thinking about those because you don't want people making funny faces or having some inappropriate posters perhaps behind you. Uh, some of the other things that you might want to consider is having like a muslin or a backdrop behind you. Um, you know, like gives a nice white background and I may do that at some point or you might have a, a nice back matting or something like that behind you that you drape down. One of the first things, you, as you can see on my desktop here, there's a couple things here. We got Google uh, News going, we got a little Facebook. You want to make sure and close these applications. Okay, so any other unneeded applications other than those that perhaps you stage off stage like in this case I've got two monitors going okay and in uh, off stage the one that I'm recording is monitor number one and then I've got a second monitor where I've actually got some other you know some of my notes my speaking notes and then perhaps also uh, some other um, windows some browser windows that I might want to show you later on I'll have those positioned off stage any other folders that have documents and things like that that you want to share during that particular screencast you want to have that off stage as well so I call my second monitor the one that I'm not recording my off stage monitor and of course the one I'm recording is my stage monitor okay so those are some considerations there the other thing that you want to think about too is this see how we have kind of a messy background here take a lot of these icons because folks when when your viewers are viewing these things they're going to basically be wanting to know what's inside those folders so you want to take all of those things and just take them again put them off stage or what you can do here too is you just create another folder and just call them temporary desktop icons and then move all of those icons into that into that temporary desktop folder okay there you go you can always move them back out later on and then what you can do with that later on is you know move that all off stage and then if uh, for most folks having these little disk drives and so on uh, is probably fine but I also tend to like to move those off stage as well so now you got a nice little clean desktop here okay on a desktop on a Windows desktop you can do the same thing here um, so in a Windows type of environment I'm using Windows 7 what you can also do is just right click anywhere in your desktop and then go up to view hit uh, and under the view menu you'll have this little floating menu bar that appears and there's this little checkbox that says check and you'll set, uh, show desktop icons. It defaults to checked but you can just simply uncheck that and all your desktop icons go away. The other thing I would say that you probably want to consider as well and you can do this for both the PC and also for the Macintosh is to consider changing that desktop icon. Now some folks like to record their screencast and they got a picture of their dog or their family or something like that. You want to actually, you know, I actually recommend uh, having something more generic. So this is the default background that comes out of uh, the Macintosh environment and of course you know what the Windows environment looks like kind of looks like that, right? So what you can do is actually change that. So in the Windows environment, you can personalize this. Again, you just right click anywhere and then in the control panel, find the area where you have the ability to personalize and then change the, back, the desktop background. Okay, so that's one thing that you can do there. The other thing that you can do on a, on a Macintosh environment, um, 
you would again just right click, change desktop background there, and then in that, uh, in the next dialog window that comes up, in here where it says desktop and screensaver that pops up, you can uh, just change whatever that desktop icon is. Now I actually like to have like maybe some generic, uh, I, you know, pictures and so on that I can just use as a quick backdrop. But the other thing that you might want to consider as well is to maybe create your own custom background, okay, that maybe brands your own uh, business or whatever it is that you're, you're trying to develop. So perhaps just as a quick and dirty, I created a um, quick and dirty backdrop that I don't actually typically use, but just to kind of show you the concept here, here's a simple you know, white background uh, desktop with a little logo or something like that. You can even have your website is there as well, okay? But again, I typically, typically like to use just kind of a generic, clean kind of a background and so on, okay? In fact, for the Macintosh, there is also another application that I like to use. It's called Backdrop, and it's a little application. It's free. You can get it, uh, and when you click it, basically what it does is it just sets your, your background real easily to any kind of image that you select, or even the generic uh, Macintosh uh, aqua blue, I guess is what they call that. So that's something that you can use there as well. And to get Backdrop, basically you can go, here's their About page. They have actually on the App Store, you can take a look at them. And here's their website over here. Okay, so on the App Store, as you can see, that price is pretty, is free, so that's a good price. Okay, the other thing I would recommend as well is, especially if you're going to be teaching folks how to use some software or a website or something like that, or even if you're just doing a PowerPoint presentation or something along those lines, it's really hard sometimes for your viewer to follow where, you're, where it is that you're pointing. And typically the way you would point whenever you're doing a video screen recording uh, or a screencast or along those lines is the way you point is you show where your mouse cursor is. Sometimes that mouse cursor gets a little bit hard to see. So what I like to do is actually bump up the size of the, my mouse cursor and in the Macintosh environment you would just simply right click anywhere actually uh, go up to the preferences menu is probably the system preferences and then up in the universal access uh, icon just click that and then one of these selections there is going to be a tab that says mouse and trackpad just click that and then down here at the bottom is you'll be able to see the cur mouse cursor size so you can just bump that up a little bit and you can kind of see how the mouse cursor bumps up quite a bit there so let's just go ahead and use oh, that's a little bit too overblown so let's use that one right there uh, so there's my mouse cursor, a lot easier to see now. And similarly, in the Windows environment, the, uh, the easiest way is to go to the control panel. And then in there, find an option for your mouse. So you would select your mouse. And then go to the pointers menu. And under pointers, I like to select Windows arrow and then just go to extra large on the system screen. Click that and then click the OK button. And things are a lot bigger now, OK? So now things get a little bit easier to see for your, uh, for your users. This might actually be a little bit big, so I might have to fix this one. Okay, so, uh, so those are some real quick things that you can do. The other thing I would say, too, is depending on the presentation style or the kind of thing that you're going to be presenting, if it's going to be extemporaneous or scripted, and there are situations where you'd be doing one or the other. In most cases, whenever I'm creating for a corporate client or something like that, or I'm creating an e-learning product, or if you have subject matter experts that are involved, they want to make sure that what you're saying or how you're teaching a particular software or something like that needs to be reviewed by different people, then really you're kind of in a scripted environment. So you want to write out everything that you're going to say ahead of time. And I'll show you a workflow that I follow. It'll be later on in this course uh, on how I actually go through that uh, and script. I'll record the audio and actually create my visuals from the audio that gets recorded. And I'll show you how I do that. So, um, so if you're going to script, then you want to make sure you write everything else out. Or if you're going to be extemporaneous, that is just kind of doing things on the fly, kind of like how I'm doing this presentation right here, then at the very least have an outline. If you notice, my eyes keep looking over here every now and then. There's not even a clock there. So the idea is uh, just have some kind of an outline off screen or something like that that you're referring to if you're going to be extemporaneous or if you're going to actually be uh, doing this on a scripted basis, then what you want to do, see notice how I'm just bringing these icons in, they're coming in from off stage, my off stage monitor. So there's actually a template and I'll go ahead and make sure I uh, include a link here that you can use uh, to download this template. Uh, but basically, this template would look something like this. It's just a simple two-column format. There are many formats out there that are available, but you can just use a simple two-column format. And it looks like this. So uh, when you open it up, it's basically a column for visuals. So what's happening visually, some of your visual notes, what you want to have up, 
um, at the time or what you might want to be doing and what, uh, what window you want to be showing a particular application or even what web browser or what uh, website you want to be showing in your web browser. Those notes might be going here, but then your script or your audio then goes in the second column. This would basically be your spoken word. So I'll make sure there's a link here that's available for you that you can download and you just use this. It's free. Uh, and also include a checklist, so all of the things that we talked about. So we talked about some very nice uh, quick tips that you can use to prepare uh, your uh, screencast, uh, every one of your screencast presentations. So one is to uh, make sure you close all your unneeded applications. Right? So now I don't need this, so we'll close that guy out. Okay. So you want to close out all your unneeded applications. Also to uh, clean up your desktop, including your icons, put them in a folder someplace, or just use some of the built-in functions of your particular platform to hide those icons. Um, consider changing your background to something more professional or even a branded background on your desktop. Clean up your background, so that uh, including the, the picture that you're using your desktop, but also cleaning up the background behind you as well if you're going to be using a, a presentation style that I'm using here, like a picture-in-picture -picture kind of a thing where I, I have the uh, a live action video uh, in a picture-in-picture -picture type of a format overlaying a screencast. I'll show you how to do that later on in this course as well. But clearly, if you're just going to be doing just a straight, a straight screencast where there's not going to be any kind of a visual of you talking or anything like that, then of course what happens behind you is less of an issue. We talked about also maximizing your mouse cursor and also, um, and also the idea of scripting uh, your uh, content. Uh, your spoken word before you actually get going, especially if you're going to be in an environment where you're, whatever it is that you're teaching needs to be reviewed by others. Okay, so that's basically it in this first part of this video. We have a lot more to talk about, so stay tuned, and I'll see you in the next video.